I feel like my life's journey has really brought me to where I'm at today as far as, a, as an Inuit tattooist, as a seamstress, as a teacher, as a mother, and a community member. There was a certain point in my life when I was deciding like, okay, do I want to be anxious about this? Do I want to fret over, am I doing the right thing? Am I being disrespectful? Am I being respectful? Am I following all of the traditional values? Is this something that my ancestors would want? And I got to this point of like, if I was an ancestor and I was looking down on my grandchildren, great, great grandchildren or whatever, what would I want to see? And I remember reflecting like, I would want them to try. I would want them to step out of their comfort zone and make sure that they do all of these things that they feel uncomfortable doing that aren't easy, like learning how to make our traditional boots, tattooing, revitalizing, and owning it and being proud of it. That's what I would want to see. Okay, let's give that a look. A look, see. Mm, yes. <laughs> Have your mom take a look. Now there's just a little blotch coming out. I, I've gotten a lot of questions with young women who are thinking about getting it and are hoping to be ready to get it at some point in their lives. And when when women go into my DMs or my message or my inbox, they usually ask about what they mean, what the tattoos mean, and um, that they're ready for a particular tattoo, either on their face or their arms, wrist, legs, just chest, depends on what they're ready for. And so I, I'm always asking them like, okay, what are they gonna represent? What do they mean? You know, why do you feel like you're ready for the tattoo? Because you can't just get it willy nilly. You can't just because they look cool, because they're trending, right? You, you have, there has to be a personal story behind it and, and a reason. So why did you wanna get these tattoos on your eyes? Because when, when I got my first tattoo, I started thinking about like how to view the world and how to speak out of my ancestors' view point of view. And um, I did a lot of research and this is one of the tattoos that I found out about it. It's beautiful. or just bringing it back, it's really important to kind of have that story with it too. And that also kind of strengthens the tattoo and it strengthens the whole process, the whole ceremony, the intention when we do it together. I just try to encourage them to just look within, you know, understand what's important to you, what you want represented, if you have anything that you want to heal from, or if you have a success or an achievement that you want to acknowledge. Those are all really great reasons to get traditional tattoos. Yeah, the tattoos, you know, we've learned about them. And, and how do you feel, Nicole, how your daughter's getting these? Was it a little different? A little skeptical at first. (laughs) 
Why, why do you think you were? Tattoos. No. They're permanent. <laughs> There's just so many things that I'm grateful for. My family have always supported me. They've always been there for me, as well as my community. My grandmother, she supports me by not saying no, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but she grew up in the assimilation era. She was, she was colonized and she went to boarding school and she still thinks tattoos are bad. She still doesn't really believe in the work that I do, but she supports me by not verbally saying anything. And even though she might have a different belief on our tattoos, just because of her upbringing, because tattoos were considered like a bad person's thing, like somebody who disrupts things. And so that's just her mindset. And, and you know, I, that, I just got to embrace it and just accept her for that. And, you know, I think it's beautiful that she's able to still support me, um, even though she, her beliefs might be different. Yeah, yesterday actually I went into Fred Meyers and someone asked if I drew on my face. I was like, what? No. <laughs> this the real deal. Yeah. I mean, if you did it, it was fine too. It's kind of like a makeup <laughs> yeah. form of makeup, you know? Oh, yeah. Like beauty, beauty standards mm. back in the day were different. Oh, yeah. My favorite thing is when, like, kids who don't normally see this, they finally see it and their their eyes just light up. <laughs> yeah. I think we're good. Let's go ahead and move to the chin and then we'll do a reveal and you can look at it and then see if you want anything. Okay. <laughs> or, you know whatever, thicker lines or whatever you want. I love it. Yay, it looks so good on you. I grew up in Nome, in Sitnasok. I remember our family had a family fish camp and we went out there every summer. The day after school ended in May, we were out at camp and we stayed there all summer. And we would fish and pick greens and I remember us as kids just running around on the hill while our parents and older siblings picked berries and picked greens, cut fish, cut up the seal, made oil such a loving environment just being on the land smelling those beautiful aromas 
the smell of the tundra and just seeing the respectful nature that my family took care of these animals and these greens and berries was just so fulfilling for me and I grew up to to follow in that those same footsteps and I remember doing maybe too much and getting burnt out picking a lot more than I could handle or taking care of a lot more than I could handle myself and my mother used to scold me and she would tell me like you have to make sure that you can take care of what you catch take care of what you pick because we don't want to waste and so these lessons that I learned over time really shaped who I am today and I remember I was 16 years old, maybe 15 years old. My mom took care of everything. She took care of all of the seal. We helped out, but she mainly did all of the work with the seal. And I remember one, one spring she broke her ankle and she wasn't able to do any of those things. And me and my siblings had watched her all those years. We observed and uh, we watched and she basically said like, I can't do it, you need to do it. And so we just were like, okay, and we, we did it. We made some mistakes, and, but we learned and we started feeling really good about ourselves. And that really elevated. I think that was like a coming of age for me when I was able to take care of a seal all by myself without my mother there. And so I felt like I really stepped into this womanhood phase. And if it was this time where I knew there was our traditional tattooist, I probably would have asked mom, mom, can I get my tattoo? Probably would have asked her at that time because I felt like a woman. I felt truly like a Inupiaq woman at that time when I could take care of a seal all by myself. Okay. All right, let's take a look and right, check it out. I'm so excited. Yep, I, I think that that's like the perfect spot. Okay, cool. Space. <laughs> and then you can smile real big. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my name is Darlene Trigg. My Inupiaq name is Bapaluk. Some people call me that. I'm always grateful when people do. You know, there's so many people who just have this really, you know, flame in them that just really wants to learn, learn the culture, learn the language, and they feel like they don't know where to where to find that. And that's really difficult to navigate sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, doing a film like this and um, learning a, a new practice and teaching it to somebody else is so important. But as um, we grow together and we realize that, you know, we we are what our ancestors prayed for. You know, we're, we're doing what they hoped we would do. And that's bringing back our traditions, understanding who we are, strengthening our identities. And through tattooing, that is allowing us to empower ourselves. In our community, you know, there's such a desire. So many people just feel called to put, you know, traditional tattoos on themselves to reclaim that part of who they are. Having traditional tattoos on myself made me realize how much strength there is in it, how empowered you feel, how connected you feel to who you are as a person. And I wanted to pass that on. I want to be able to share that. And I think that's the important piece to share with other people that feeling of strength and connection to the thing that makes us as people strong, that's why I want to, to tattoo. Okay, and so let's go ahead and get all of the needle stuff prepped up. Okay. So we'll need this. Go ahead and get the needle out there. Okay. And so you have your cotton thread and your needle, your clean needle. Right now we're using a Glover style needle. Um, and then you have your um, thread and you use, you dip it in. You don't need a lot, it's just enough ink to just, one, once you pass it through your skin, then it'll stay. Okay. So let's just prep the skin. Everything about who we are as Native people relies on a woman's strength to, to do, right? If a man hunted a seal and he brought that seal to a woman, that seal was no longer his and the food and clothing and 
other things that were made from that seal belonged to her to give back to him and, and others in their family. Oh, all right. It's crooked. Is it? A little bit. Oh, darn it. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's why we take our time and, and do it. And so her ability to be strong and like making sure nothing went to waste, using every bit, even if he's a meager hunter, a wife can be, you know, make things last. I mean, that's like a skill set, right? Like that's a mindset. And if we weren't here, what would be? You know, it feels like more than just, you know, we're a necessity to humanity, like in a procreation sense, but this is sacred, the act of doing women's things is sacred. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. Can't really tell. So we're just taking our time and learning new techniques. Like I wouldn't have thought to do dots. I would have just drawn up, drew, drew it. Great. Yay. Okay, so now we're ready. Yay. They look great. So we have this here, and you did two dots, so you have your in and your out, where you're going to poke and where you're going to go out. So if you could just hold, like, yeah, hold it, and you don't need to be too tight, but just, yeah, there we go, tight. And so you're going to go in, and you're going to feel that skin, like, get soft I guess and then once it gets soft you're gonna come out because you're you don't want to go too deep or else the the ink will blow away mm -hmm. and you also don't want to go too close or else the skin will rip yeah so I'm just gonna add a little bit more and I'm gonna do this and it's always weird doing it on yourself but that's how I did this one or too good oh that's good yeah so go in I feel it go and move this thumb you see oops Sorry, it's all right. So I'm going in, and then I'm gonna there. And then I'll pull it, and I kind of like let the ink stay there for a little bit, and voila! Yep, and then just go ahead and give it a wipe. And these ones tend to bleed a little bit more just because you're going deeper. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that frightens me the most is that I'm gonna get it wrong or that I'm not gonna be good enough. I mean, it's a normal, you know, concern that most people have. But that's not easy. Nope. I think the reason why I can do it now is because I there's a there's more people who have the skill set that I can call on and ask questions of and connect with. And pull from that side, yep. Okay, let me push a little bit more. And then, yep. Just let it sit for a sec. Yeah, you could give it some pressure with your finger. There we go, and then pull it out. And then let go. And wipe it clean. Okay. Beautiful. Mm. Okay, okay. Two more. Okay. Growing up, you know, we've been, had this, I guess, narrative pushed on us of what we're supposed to be as native, indigenous, new brown people. And oftentimes it's very wrong. You know, we have to be brown skin. We should know our traditions. We should know our language and eat our traditional foods, but that's not always the case. And that doesn't make a person native. Last stitch. Last stitch. End, uh, end of the ceremony, ending it off with a strong stitch.
Oh, that one, look, the ink looks really good through the skin compared to that first one. Mm -hmm. I'll take a look after you wipe it. Okay. So I don't have a good position. Not how I'm supposed to do it. There you go. Nice wipe. Thank one you. wipe. Oh, perfect. Good job. Thank you. All right, we're done. Okay, this is it. Beautiful. Good job. Thank you. Nice stitches. Awesome. Dried seal, also known as black meat. And this is the intestines, dried and cooked. I like to um, bunch up my meat, my meat and my illeroits. We call these illeroits, the intestines, and then a little bit of the dunnock, the blubber, and just have it like as one bite. And then I'll put in some of the greens too. And it's just a really good flavor all around. All of this stuff um, we harvested as a family this this summer and it's so important to be able to go out onto the land and forage and harvest and learn all of the different things that the land has to offer especially knowing that our ancestors had done that before and they were able to live really happy healthy lives and so knowing that I'm able to eat and enjoy this food really makes me feel happy and grateful for what 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 our land provides. So I know not everybody has this type of meal available to them at all, you know, any time of the year. So I'm really grateful that I'm able to eat it as often as I do. And it's just really just good for my soul to have it, especially doing the work that we do helping to revitalize the, you know, revitalize our traditions and our cultures and try to be the best people that we can be for not just the people who are living today, but for the next generation, for our babies and our children. So this is all really good and delicious. This is some real soul food. Perfect for right before you're gonna get a tattoo.
I learned how to tattoo about seven or eight years ago and I was taught two methods. One was the, the poking method and the other one was with skin stitching. And that's a unique method that our ancestors did as a way to tattoo most often. And so I learned how to do that and I've been a seamstress, a skin sewer for a very long time. Since I was a little girl, my mom taught me how to do all of those um, stitches and how to make hats and mittens. And I learned how to sew on a machine for my grandmother. So all of those things kind of come together and allow me to be this tattooist that I am today. And these stitches are good. Let's do the other side. The tattoos, you know, we've learned about them and they also showed like your ability to withstand pain, your pain threshold to ensure that you're a strong woman and you can handle like childbirth or just, you know, handle pain. And it, you know, it was a mark of beauty. It was, it was like our permanent makeup and it just was, it just symbolized so many things. It also was like a representation of your family, where you came from. If your family was known for making kayaks, you probably would have a representation of that on your tattoo somewhere. It also depended on the artist who was doing it. They did a lot of the, a lot of the artistry on it and the design. It was really up to them, oftentimes, what the artist wanted to do. And so usually the tattooist would um, know the family, know a lot about the history of the family and the community. So there were always people who were well known and who knew a lot within the community. So, and they were also one of the skilledest, like the skilled seamstresses, because oftentimes it was done by stitching. And so you wanted to have nice, good, clean stitches. So they, they had like all these different attributes of, as a tattooist. And... So good thoughts, just thinking good thoughts. And then when I do this, like I do it and through ceremony and I put in good intention and I light the khulak and I, you know, tell the women like, okay, you know, let's go through this together and put good intentions, good thoughts, and you know, let go of things that are negative and maybe have been holding you back. And your ancestors are here with you in this room right now. They're proud of you. Over time, these guys will bleed together and they'll look more solid, but I like I like the stippled look like the dots, just like each dot, you can see each dot, each intention, each prick of love. Okay, done with that. So now I'm gonna do the last stitches and then we'll be done. One of the things that I find strength in is helping other women and empowering women and finding their strength because women are so important in history. They were the most important beings because they created life and we just need to empower women, just uplift them and just give support to them. And if there's any teachers, just give so much support to them. So I feel like the journey that I've been on is to help empower women and find their strength in who they are. Right. Mm. And 
When I learn about our language, I feel that strength. When I learn how to do a different sewing technique that my ancestors did, I feel that strength. When I tattoo, I feel that strength. And it's so important to teach as much as I learn. And so as a teacher, I try and do that. And that's what I wanna keep passing on to the next generation.